Got a treat for you guys. How the loader works, if you pull it to the inside, loader curls. Our sweet peppers. <laughs> There's the finished product. There's about half our crop. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hart Tongue Family Farms, and today I've got a treat for you guys. We're gonna do a tour and a walk around of our brand new tractor after I've drive, driven it for a couple hours. See how I like it, see how to drive it, and let you guys know how, how to drive it and how I like it. So, like I said, we have a new Holland T6155. It's a tractor from Kunal Implement in uh, DeWitt, Iowa, and Preston, Iowa. This thing was brand new. It's got about 35 to 40 hours on it right now. We bought it with about 21. So bought it pretty much brand new. Price is right, we really like it. It's a nice little utility tractor for us. So we've put about 20 hours on it so far and we, we like it, we do like it so far. It's got the 845 TL loader on it. So a little bit smaller loader, but it works, it works. So let's do a walk, quick walk around and I'll show you guys how to drive it. How, do you, how does that sound? So start in the back, we have rear tires. They're a Michelin 18.4 R38s, so 38 rolling radius. And then in the front, we have uh, Michelin as well, 14.9 R28s. So nice little tires on them, they're meaty, they're brand new, no complaints with them. PTO in the back, it's got the flippable uh, small 1000 540 PTO. It's got back rear controls on the rear fender if we need it. It's got flow control on the outside, so it's got three hydraulics and you can control the flow right here on the outside. It's got little knobs of a needle valve that you can turn. It's got a three point on it. Regular cat three hitch, I believe. Right now we got our Archway mower on there or Pat's Archway mower or my uncle's Archway mower that we're just gonna use. It's a 14 footer, 144B that I'm just gonna go mow some pastures with after, after I get done with this video. It's got nice three wheel weights in the back. This tractor's nice and ballasted for our hills. It's set in the wide tread. So you can kind of see we're widened out. It's how we like to have it in our hills. We, we definitely need to be widened out, that is for sure. So, yeah, nice standard tractor. It does have def. It's got your three steps on the side. Entry on both way, doorways. Nice tractor mat. You guys check the, that out. Love our tractor mat. First thing we got for this tractor. Quick, quick disconnect. If we want to disconnect our loader, it's pretty easy to do. You set it down, set the sands down, float, uh, wiggle your hydraulics, get everything kind of loosened up and depressurized. Take this out, store it, and then you can just back away once you get rid of your uh, your hooks right here. Get Not get rid of them, but just unhook it. So yeah, it's a nice tractor. No complaints here, that's for sure. We like it. So let's go ahead and start it up and show you guys how to drive it. What do you think? It does have def and it does have fuel, obviously. So let's fire this bad girl up. Clutch in. the AC cranking in here. It is hot outside. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like button because I am sweating. Like, whew, it's hot out. So, quick tour of the cab. So we got a, we got a buddy seat in here. Nice left-hand storage area. A little knob to control, to close our door. It's got a nice four post cab. It doesn't have a six post, so there's not a post right here. So the door is a little wider. So it's a little harder to close, but I'd rather have the door a little harder to close than to have that six post, because some tractors like our old Maxim has another post right here in the cab. So when I say four and six posts, four posts, one, two, three, four, six posts have another one right here. So yeah, it's got the, got the premium seat for these uh, older tractors or for these uh, smaller tractors. Not old. Parking brake here on the left. It's got our left hand reverser, forward and back. So just clutch in, there's reverse, there's forward. Blinker, lights. We got our hazard or our uh, beacon light. You gotta see right there. Sweet. We got a radio, which works really well. Charger, a couple of nice cubbies for phones. Here's our uh, HVAC controls right here. And we got some more controls. We got our uh, front wall assist, our differential. Not sure what that is, not sure what that is, not sure what those are. I believe those are like auto engine speeds. 
Here's our PTO controls, our three hydraulic levers. And here we got our forward reverse, or our, our gear, gear range. This tractor is kind of interesting. It is a quad. It's basically like a quad range. So it's got 16 forward, 16 reverse, I believe. I know it's got 16 forward, maybe not quite 16 reverse. But basically how you switch between, you can kind of see you got four ranges. One, two, three, four. When, you're, when this lever is all the way towards you, you're in your front range. When this lever is all the way away from you, you're in your high range, so your low and high range. And it, so you basically got nine through 12, you can automatically shift between. But if you wanted to go to 13 through 16, you got a clutch and then manually go up. So now I'm in 13. So yeah, so that's my high range. It's my medium range. I can shift down. Now I'm on five through eight and I can shift down into creeper gear. So that's how that works. You got a loader controls right here. Easily the best loader controls that I've seen so far in a tractor. What's nice about it is I can just set my arm right here and run my loader right here. It's really nice. Kind of see how the loader works. If you pull it to the inside, loader curls. Pull it to the outside, loader uh, uncurls. So inside curl, uncurl and then pull it back is how you raise it. Push it forward is how you lower it. And it is not a self leveling. So it'll keep so when you raise it'll raise like this. So you gotta if you want to keep your bucket level, you're gonna have to basically just raise and kind of keep tilting. So yeah, that's a nice loader bucket that is for or loader controls that is for sure. This tractor mat is absolutely awesome. So a little bit about tractor mat guys, they make laser um, fitted mats for the calves of your equipment. So combines, tractors, uh, gators I've seen. So it, like I said, they only sell certain models worth, but for what, if they have your guys' model, I would highly recommend looking into them. Because what's nice about them is, when we do manure or muddy work or snowy work in this with this tractor, if I, when, instead of just getting the, the mat, the floor of this tractor all dirty and never having to get it clean with this mat, you can basically just roll up the mat, pull it out, power wash it, let it dry, and stick it right back in. Not to ever get your tractor actually dirty. It is absolutely awesome. Well worth the 150 bucks, I believe it is. So yeah, you guys can get your mat for a, somewhere around 150, 160 bucks using the code Heart Tongues. Get 15 bucks off your mat. Highly recommend it, guys. These tractor mats are awesome. So this thing's got 45 hours on it. So my dad's put quite a bit of hours on it, shredding and stuff. We're getting some toys for it. We got a drag. So we this is basically just gonna be our utility tractor to keep around here to feed cattle, to plow lanes, to keep upkeep on the prop upkeep on the property, put it in our food plot. So it's gonna be nice. So yeah, our throttle's right here. Rated at 2250 RPM. So yeah. You can kind of see. There's our mower. Raise that up. So yeah, okay, now I'll show you guys how to drive this thing. In order to look, put the steer, the put the steering wheel down, you gotta push this button and then pull down like that. Hazards are right here. So I'll clutch in, brakes already down, pull back on that, now I can back up. You gotta actually put it in reverse. There we go. So you got a foot throttle I can use right there. Or I can use this throttle down here. I gotta be very careful because this thing's really short so I can really get away from me. And the cool thing about these tractors, you don't have to clutch to change directions. You just flick it and it's good. So this is a tractor, this transmission is awesome for loader work. That is for sure. So, like I said, I got four ranges in this gear, or four gears in this range. So five six seven eight so now if i wanted to go down into four in the creep gear i just gotta clutch in and then i can jump gears so there we go so there's four three two and one so now i'm in creep gear so when i'm in first gear full throttle i can go 1.3 cruising Oof. 
clutch is a little bit uh, trippy. Trippy or what's the word I'm looking for? Clutch is a little bit uh, sensitive. Sensitive little puppy. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and drop this loader bucket or drop this loader fork. Probably gonna drop it in that little uh, shed there. I'm gonna pick up the bucket. I'll show you guys how that works. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, the city of Bellevue actually dropped off some old slag and gravel um, at the public fishing access on our property. For those of you guys who don't know, we allow people on our property to fish for trout. So I'm gonna go there and level some of that stuff off so guys can drive into the drive into our property without driving through like six inch rut or six foot rut six inch ruts. So I'll clutch, go into neutral, hit the brakes, pull up on the parking gear. And yeah, so let's go ahead and unhook this uh, bail fork, these bail spears. So this is a classic Euro coupler. This, this couple will uh, work for all of Pat's equipment as well for a loader, because we also have a T7, New Holland T7 210. So that loader is, the loader attachments for that are compatible with this. So in order to hook these things up, I just gotta pull this. It releases these pins right through there. You just release them. So now I can just drive forward and set this thing down. So it's pretty nice. So let's go ahead and do that. You can kind of see. It's, it's loose. So I'll go ahead and set this thing down. So I hope you guys can see that. So you guys can kind of see I did it all for my cab. Didn't get out and have to do anything. So what I did was I just kind of lined up these orange hooks to get in between there. And just kind of slid itself in. And this uh, lever actually, when it felt that click in, it uh, was able to snap and lock in this bucket. So you can kind of see we're locked through right now, which is good. That's how we want to be. So this bucket is ready to go. So now let's go ahead and take this thing down the road see how you guys like it but like i said this tractor is a really nice really handy tool for us so i hope you guys do enjoy this walk around if you guys have any specific questions or if you guys have any tractor similar to this have any tips for me because like i said this is my dad and i's first tractor we ever owned it's got 45 hours on it so it's gonna have plenty of a uh, life ahead of it so if you guys get any uh, tips and tricks on how to maintain this tractor keep it nice and taken care of i'd appreciate it so let's go ahead head down head down the road thank you tractor man and at the end, like I said, I'll drive this for a couple more hours today and I'll show you guys what, how, I, uh, how I like this tractor, what I think of it, etc., etc. Oh, let's go to a, let's go do a plant update too. You guys, uh, I had a video about uh, three, four weeks ago, card right here, of when we actually got the new tractor and when we, uh, my wife and I planted a garden, you guys met my wife. Here's a follow up for that when uh, you guys can actually see the plants. I'll call you right back, I'm recording a video. All right, bye fathers alrighty guys so I just realized I never updated you guys on our plants so let's update you guys on our plants yeah as you can see they've gotten really big hi doogie we had some uh, successes we had some really good successes and we had some failures you guys got any guesses what happened and to what so here are our three potting plants as you guys can see nice and lively nice and lively not so nice and lively our sweet peppers I don't know what happened. They got drowned out by weeds or if I planted did something wrong, but nothing ever came up with any of those plants. So I just kind of ripped them out and we'll save this off next year. Our, this was our uh, onions and our peas. Our onions are still looking really good, really healthy actually. And they're, they'll probably be ready in probably the next week, I'm thinking. The peas and the beans, we've already picked a good crop off it already. I'll show you guys when we're almost done, when we're done here. But you guys can kind of see Here's what the peas look like. Nice, this one's actually ready. That's what your peas look like. Nice peas in a pod. And you can either open them up and eat them, just the regular peas, or we're gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cook these tonight. I'm actually going to just kind of chop the ends off, put them in a pan and pan fry it. So yeah, so those are peas. Onions actually looked pretty good. If you guys remember, we actually did a uh, test between these 
uh, two soil types. We had just regular soil from the farm and then potting soil from Lowe's and Menards. And if you guys can kind of see, the onions is a kind of a telltale. The onions really like the pottery soil compared to the regular soil because they were planted all on a line and we only got a couple onions here on the regular soil, but the potting soil looks nice. So definitely for onions, use the potting soil. But for the peas, it's pretty indifferent. They both kind of grew in the center. Yeah, and here's the beans. These beans were awesome. These beans absolutely rocked it. It was just in regular soil. You can kind of see that's what beans look like. So we'll pick some more of these probably in the next couple days. These beans are actually almost dead. So we, we picked probably half the beans off of here, half to two thirds of the beans off of here. We're in a big drought right now, so, or not drought, but we're in a dry spell right now, so that's kind of why they look a little dead. But, but yeah, the beans look pretty decent. Now we'll head up here to the porch, to the porch planters. Kristen got some nice little flowers. So, and up here we had more peas and more onions. So you can kind of see the onions are definitely starving for water right now, but they're almost ready. Again, probably in the next week or so. And here's the disaster that I had. This one's all me. So if you guys can remember, we had half pottery soil, half regular soil. You can kind of see, these look all burnt up and dead. These look decent. That's because they are burnt up and dead. Wanna know why? Because there was a big weed in here that I thought was a pea for some reason, and it grew to be about twice the size and four times the thickness of a pea plant and just sucked all the moisture and killed all these things. You can kind of see that was the big rut when I pulled it out. But that just kind of explains the big reason why we need to get rid of weeds in any of our fields because they just take away moisture and nutrients from any of the plants that we want to grow. So yeah, that's why these are all dead looking. And they didn't produce anything because I had a big weed in there I didn't get. And overall, these peas are just starting to kind of flower out. You can kind of see these where all the peas will come. This one is just starting to go. These aren't going to make too much, guys. I'm not going to lie. These small pottering plants did not work out for peas. I think next year I'm going to put beans and just onions in these. So... But yeah, there you guys have it. There's your update on our little garden. Uh, was it worth it as far as money-wise? I can go into a separate video if you got, or just like a separate couple minutes segments and kind of pencil it out and see if it was worth it. My gut tell me it was not, but it was fun. So anyway, let's get back to the regular video. Oh, before I forget, I gotta show you guys how we're gonna cook it. Here's all I'm doing is I cut up the beans in a little itty bitty pieces, cut up the peas, basically chop the ends off, and then I'm going to put pan fry them. So we'll see how they turn out. There's the finished product. There's about half our crop we got. We got a little bit of pork burger and some more hot dogs and whatnot. Just pan fried it with a little, basically boiled some water, threw, some, threw the beans on there, cooked it for three minutes, basically got it steamed, covered it, and then put a quarter or a tablespoon of butter with it. It's going to give it a little zest, salt and pepper. She's good. So it's perfect. Alrighty guys, so I just got done shredding for the day. I put about three hours on the machine, three hours exactly. And here are my pros and cons of this machine. Great sound system. I'm not listening to anything right now. It has a great sound system. A great cab, great seat for, a, like I said, a more lower, lower spec tractor, lower horsepower tractor. The cab suspension is absolutely awesome. And the controls are pretty nice. Like I said, the loader controls are right here. The only thing I wish, I wish on the loader controls these, I wish these shifted forward and backward, so I'd have to hit the power reverser so much. But, or shifted gears. I wish it did something, but what do you do? But yeah. So cons, the hydraulics are very touchy. Like I could be go a little bit too far and it slams the tractor. And uh, the clutch, it, when I'm going in and out of gear, it's not very smooth. So like when I'm shifting, so like when I go from first range to second range, so from fourth to fifth gear, when I have the clutch, if I'm trying to do it in a hurry, I slam the clutch down, shift up a gear, slam it into gear, it kind of jerks a little bit. So, like I said, transmission's a little jerky, hydraulics are a little jerky, both on the loader and on the uh, the actual hydraulic levers themselves. But other than that, this tractor is awesome. It has plenty of power, plenty of stability in our hills. Some of those hills that we were in, wow, they were pretty steep. I was really happy with how it performed. So. Overall, this tractor is really awesome for having 48 and a half hours. We really, really like the tractor so far. So, 
Anyway, do you guys got any questions? You guys want me to do any more how to drive videos on any other piece of equipment that my dad or I own or that the farm owns? What do you guys think? Do you guys like this type of video? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys have made it this far, drop a like. Because it was 96 degrees outside. This tractor was definitely getting a workout. So drop a like and be sure to subscribe. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. Ooh, a little bounce going up this hill. This hill's got uh, like slabs every 10 feet. They're kind of starting to raise. This, this road almost needs to get read down. But, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. See, like, right there. Any other track that would have bounced me off my seat, but cab suspension is really nice. Yeah, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hartton Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta, ta, for now. Wow! Must be a harmonic bounce, because it is really bouncy. That's better. Now it's punching. All right, see ya.